Hi everyone, Colin Singer here. Today's topic is going to center around how Canadian employers can hire a foreign worker. First important piece of information, Canada brings in upwards of 500,000 foreign workers a year across all different programs. Naturally during COVID, the numbers are a bit lower Surprisingly, not much lower than under normal years. We're at about 90%. The annual numbers of foreign workers coming to Canada is about 90% of what it was during pre-COVID. So we're currently looking at about 325,000, 340,000 foreign workers coming to Canada each year under all programs. Under a, a pre-COVID, the numbers were upwards of 450,000, give or take. Uh, naturally, once COVID is behind us, and we're hoping that's going to be in the next uh, quarter, uh, employers are, are, are showing that they're going to need more talent, and we're going to see a lot more foreign workers coming to Canada. Foreign workers have priority in the permanent immigration stream, so for retention, employers can keep foreign workers in hire and offer them Canadian permanent residence. Let's look at some of the programs, some of the more popular programs that Canadian employers are going to use in bringing a foreign worker to Canada. The typical method is you would need an approval from the uh, Employment and Social Development Canada, that's a branch of the Canadian government that deals with employment and labor matters and that body will be involved for a lot of the employment approvals when you're trying to bring in a foreign worker coming to Canada. So typically a foreign worker will need to uh, be supported, the employer will need to have what's called a labor market impact assessment and that opinion needs to show that there is a neutral effect on the Canadian labor market. Most of the people coming to Canada uh, would need a labor market impact assessment, a neutral assessment, which would show that the labor market will not be harmed by bringing in that foreign worker. There are many programs in which uh, a, a written approval regarding the impact on the labor market, it's not required. Uh, so there is a program called the International Mobility Program and under the International Mobility Program you one need, doesn't need to have approval uh, from the Employment and Social Development Canada folks and you don't need a labor market impact assessment. The types of jobs that do not require what's called an LMIA or a labor market impact assessment are programs that have relevance to an international trade agreement, uh, a federal government program, uh, or jobs that are in the best interests of Canada. And there are thousands of positions uh, in which foreign workers, for example, uh, students coming to Canada on a work holiday program uh, don't need to have a labor market impact assessment. Uh, people who work in Canada uh, graduate from a, a university or a college and approved education institution, they can come and get a, a work permit under the postgraduate work program. That would be exempt initially uh, from having to obtain an LMIA. And there are many other situations where an employer would not need to get uh, an LMIA. There would be an exemption. Uh, there are uh, interesting methods uh, in working to get uh, an opinion on whether you need to get an LMIA. There is a, 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 a body in Canada that will give you an opinion and you can request an opinion on whether uh, a foreign worker is covered by an exemption or whether they would need to get an LMIA. So you can request an opinion from the International Mobility Unit and these, uh, this authority will, uh, by email, review your uh, requirement and, and tell you whether or not you need to go and get an LMIA. Um, 
But for most of the uh, hirings that uh, an employer is going to come across, the vast majority uh, are going to come under what's called the Temporary Foreign Worker Program, and that program predominantly requires an LMIA. And there's two kinds of uh, candidates that would fall under the Temporary Foreign Worker Program who require an LMIA. Either you're under the high wage stream or you're under the low wage stream and each of them have their own requirements. Uh, so candidates, if you're looking to this presentation today, you're overseas, uh, you might be able to figure out from today's presentation uh, whether you might be qualifying for a work permit uh, and that preceding that is a, 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 a labor market impact assessment. Uh, working with an employer, helping them, uh, informing them that this is a possibility might put you in good standing. We work with many applicants to Canada in educating employers on what they need to do to bring in a foreign worker. Interesting, a lot of employers aren't aware that they can bring in a foreign worker. A lot of employers think you have to first come to Canada and have legal status before they can get involved, and that's really not the case. So if you are going to qualify under the Temporary Foreign Worker Program, uh, there are a number of conditions that the employer has to meet. Um, one of the important elements is, of course, there has to be a transition plan. The employer has to be able to show how bringing in a foreign worker is going to help the business, it's going to help Canadian business, and it's going to help the Canadian labor market. Uh, so an employer must prove, if you're under the high wage stream, uh, that in fact there is a mechanism where this foreign worker is going to help the overall company, it's going to help uh, Canadians and perhaps allow the company to grow allow the company to hire Canadians and other uh, qualified Canadian permanent residents or citizens. Uh, so we work with employers on developing a pretty reasonable, it's not overly complicated, uh, there are certain uh, wordings and concepts that need to be in the transition plan. Of course, if you're a caregiver, you don't have to, as an employer wishing to bring in a foreign caregiver, uh, you don't need to uh, produce a, a, a transition plan. Um, but one of the uh, elements uh, in addition to a transition plan, you have to advertise. You have to let Canadians know that an employer is in fact in a position to hire and you need to uh, structure your uh, advertisements so that uh, Canadians can uh, respond to your need to be hiring a foreign worker. Uh, so you have to conduct as an employer recruitment efforts uh, to tap into the Canadian labor market. Uh, but in fact, uh, for some occupations, in fact a lot of occupations, uh, there is a noted shortage of Canadians available. But going through the steps, it's a mandate by uh, the agency in Canada to verify the labor market and ensure Canadians are not being overlooked. Also have to make sure that the, the, uh, you know, the basic elements of the position, the title of the position, the duties of the position, the wages that are being offered, all of these elements need to be uh, included in an advertisement. Uh, and the advertisement has to be posted in suitable mediums that are approved by government. Um, so there's a whole range of requirements, obviously someone in the industry who knows this area, uh, because in fact, if, obviously if you're missing some of these elements, it gets to be very frustrating uh, and you will be re denied. Uh, and for some employers, it, it can be very frustrating. Uh, so it's, wor it's worth noting, first of all, this particular discussion that we're having today, it's available on our website under the news article section. Uh, on how to hire, uh, in Canadian employers can hire a temporary foreign worker. Um, so when you're going to recruit, uh, there's uh, a, a, a series of, of basic requirements. Uh, obviously you have to have the company's name, the address, the title, the job duties, the term of employment, 
all of the basic elements. And of course, you have to have the prevailing wage. So you have to know as an employer, what is the prevailing wage? You need to be sure that what you're offering is within the realm of the medium wage rate, the prevailing wage rate, but it doesn't have to be overly high and it can't be below the low uh, that's, that's uh, used by government to measure. Uh, and of course, you have to obviously uh, specify what are the general uh, benefits that are being offered. Uh, so you, you need to offer a, a medium wage, a, wa a median wage rate and other elements that we list on our writing uh, to hire a foreign worker. Uh, again, the, the basic element that you have to meet, did you really go out and, and try to hire a Canadian? Uh, have you made reasonable efforts? And it has to be, this effort has to be ongoing. What we normally like to have employers are posting these positions for a sufficient period of time uh, keep them keep them uh, running all the time I, I suppose is, is is certainly not harmful that you constantly are recruiting and in fact in the recruitment industry it's always a good idea to be generally lightly recruiting 12 months a year uh, as an employer uh, it's probably useful that you're always looking for a good candidate so for different positions in the company so uh, it's probably beneficial to post these positions if you are an employer that's regularly facing uh, shortages uh, for certain occupations it's a good thing to have these positions posted regularly now there's another uh, program that's very interesting for companies that need uh, technology professionals we have a program in Canada called the global talent stream and it allows you to bring in a foreign technology professional uh, readily quickly uh, processing times under the global talent stream are really in, in, in terms of in practical terms you can bring in a foreign worker in in two weeks you can get the initial approval in two weeks and then it's a question of getting uh, the visa office abroad uh, to be aligned in bringing in and they're mandated uh, to give priority uh, to people who fall under the global talent stream. Uh, from a recruitment point of view, when you have a, a candidate in your company fulfilling a technology position, uh, there's a lot of scope for you to keep that individual on a permanent basis. Naturally, someone coming from overseas uh, is going to want to know that they can uh, remain in the position. Not everyone wants to be there permanently, but uh, a, a good number of candidates want to be able to access Canada's uh, permanent residence stream uh, and, they, and, and they want to know that they can do this as a condition of coming to Canada. So largely what you're doing is you're working with the Inside Canada uh, agency to verify that the labor market has been considered, the position being offered has uh, met all the requirements, and once you get a, a labor market uh, assessment uh, in hand, uh, you get a positive opinion that verifies that the labor market will have a neutral effect on that hiring on the labor market, and then you're able to go overseas and get a work permit. Now, that work permit uh, is a separate matter. Uh, it's, it's issued, of course, uh, depending on the nationality of an individual. Uh, it's, lots, it's often issued uh, by the visa post abroad. Uh, for many individuals, um, they can get a work permit at a port of entry. Uh, so when an employer is hiring a foreign worker, obviously knowing the nationality and, and having that triggers uh, by knowing, of course, you'll know the nationality, but by having that piece of information in hand, you'll know whether you're going to deal with a visa office, which in itself uh, adds uh, different time constraints. Uh, depending on the time of year, uh, posts have different priorities. And so if you have an, an intention of bringing a foreign worker, you need to know whether that foreign worker is going to need to be working with a foreign uh, post abroad. Uh, for people who uh, don't need to go through uh, a visa office abroad, again, for example, if you're bringing in an American citizen, uh, a, a person from the UK, uh, those kinds of individuals with those uh, nationalities will not need to be processed necessarily for a work permit at the, at the post abroad, but they will need an, electra an electronic travel authorization 
uh, to enter Canada. We call them ETAs. So there's a lot of documentation that you're going to need to have in hand depending on the nationality of the individual. Uh, so you've got the inside Canada uh, undertakings that you need to fulfill. Once that's all done, then you can go and get the work permit to bring the foreign worker into Canada. Uh, and so if you're dealing with the labor market impact assessment process, depending if it's downtown Toronto, or if you're dealing with a smaller uh, geographic area like Saskatoon, for example, uh, so the processing times will vary. Uh, currently we're seeing, uh, again, it also depends, for example, if the position uh, is, is one in which there's a chronic shortage. For example, medical professionals. We are constantly working with medical doctors, family physicians, uh, IT professionals. You have built-in uh, chronic shortages. So those kinds of occupations, there's priority processing uh, given to uh, on the inside Canada for the labor market impact assessment. Again, there's other issues that are involved, depending if there's licensing requirements, then you'll need uh, authorization. You'll need to show that there's preliminary approval that the foreign worker can meet uh, licensing requirements. So all of these elements have their own uh, juxtaposition and, 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 and impact uh, on how it affects uh, the strategies that are taken by the uh, professional. Often it, it makes sense to use a professional uh, for a number of reasons, uh, one who knows the ins and outs of this area. Uh, so once you've got uh, all of your uh, most important elements and your strategies lined up, uh, you can quickly bring to Canada, quickly again depending on the occupation, uh, but if you know what you're doing, uh, you can eliminate the hurdles and the obstacles that are inherent in that hiring that, that is going to take place. Uh, today's uh, presentation, you can read it actually, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, on our website under the news article section, uh, how Canadian employers can hire a temporary foreign worker. Uh, it's also uh, proud to say that this particular presentation is uh, featured in the uh, Lawyers Daily, uh, uh, a publication for uh, Canadian lawyers. Um, and so uh, take a look at the writing itself. It's got all the details you need to know. If you're a foreign worker looking to come to Canada, we can certainly help you and align you uh, with a potential employer. And we also work with our in-house uh, Global Recruiters of Montreal and skilledworker.com. Uh, all our individual clients coming to Canada uh, under using our services will receive a, a, a detailed and comprehensive job search in which we work with you in working with the employer, explaining to the employer how they can hire you. Um, it goes without saying, uh, unless you have a very impeccable background, it's very useful to be working in Canada and then transitioning into Canadian permanent residence. Very few people will qualify to come to Canada for permanent residence right out without an employer. Although there are a good number, but the vast majority of people who want to come to Canada unfortunately need to have a hiring employer in order to make it work. At, at immigration.ca we have excellent alignments with the employment and the recruitment side. So take a look at our website, uh, follow us, like us on social media, and we are quite sure there's something we can help with the vast majority of individuals looking to come to Canada, or if you're an employer, uh, we surely can lend good guidance on that front. Thanks so much for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you soon.